Hey everybody, I am super excited to introduce you today to Dr. Jonathan Mendoza. Now, Jonathan is actually a nurse practitioner and a chiropractor and his story is super interesting. I think you guys are gonna love to hear the evolution of his career path because basically he started in the chiropractic space um, wanting to be more involved with functional medicine and helping people on the front end of their health. Everything that this podcast is about, he's about. Like, let's go deep dive inside of yourself and find out what's going on and let's make it right on the front end so you don't have to be sick and in pain and fix it on the back end like the Western medical system is so accustomed to doing. So after um, he started out as a chiropractor, he switched over and he got his nurse practitioner degree. And now what he has done is he's actually started two companies that are both so awesome. I know you guys are going to be interested to hear more about these things. Um, One of his companies is MSW Lounge, and he does the IV vitamin drip therapy and vitamin um, injections. And what's so cool about it. And this is actually the reason I was like, okay, I got to have you on my podcast is that he's not just doing that. He's actually doing blood work with people first and finding out what they actually need and then giving them vitamin infusions for those things. So cool. He's deep, like taking such a deep dive into the science of methylation pathways. Um, and he's asking the deeper questions, not just like, Oh, do you need methylated vitamins? But okay. Do you need methylated vitamins for what purpose? What are you trying to achieve? Energy, insulin sensitivity. So it's, he's amazing to listen to. You can tell that he's so passionate about this, which has led him to become very educated about this. So cool. And then the other thing that he's doing, um, is he has a company called Slenderella and this is what I met him through at paleo effects. Um, they had a Slenderella booth. It was very posh. It was like these little drink mixes with methylated B vitamins and all sorts of other vitamins, um, and little flavored drink mixes that you would mix into a sparkling water and wow they were so effective i was blown away by how good i felt um, after taking them and so i wanted to have them on the podcast today so you guys could hear a little bit more about the science behind that i love supporting companies like this that are actually like they're making a great product with the basis of some deeper science so so cool so here we go i'm I'm gonna jump on here with dr jonathan mendoza I'll start off by saying it was really fun meeting you at Paleo FX. I, you were running around, like doing something crazy. And I was at your booth. Um, a good friend of mine, Josh Trent, was like, Tara, you've got to go try this. you got to go try this product. <laughs> I am feeling alive right now. I was like, okay. So I go over and it's all very uh, Beverly Hills posh. We've got these like B12 special powder drink mixes with uh, bubbly sparkling waters. And I'm like, wow, I like vitamins. <laughs> yeah, and- it's fun. Actually, it's it's this thing right here. I know some <laughs> yeah. of the viewers probably can't see. Yeah, it's it's my drink. It's my daily drink. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And it was delicious. And I was feeling alive afterwards. And I thought, oh, this is cool. Like, this is a cool product. But then you walked by and they were like, oh, this is Jonathan. you got to talk to him. Because I was telling him how I was a health coach and I love all this stuff. I was like, oh, that's cool. You guys have methylated product, you know, it, like yeah. anyway, B12 and all that in there. And so we started talking, you walk by and then it turns out you're into all the DNA stuff and genetics. And I'm like a super nerd whipping out my laptop in the middle of paleo. Like, look, I know. Look, 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 look. <laughs> I know. You're, you're, you're like, this isn't too much. Is it? I was like, no, no, show me. Come on. I want to see this stuff. Right. Yeah. No, that, it was, it was awesome. Like I love paleo effects. You know, I know, I don't know how many years you banned it. That was my second year. And first year. Um, first year. So it's, it's a big event, right? Like I know you were at KetoCon recently back in Austin. I'm sure it's way different than that, um, which is not a bad thing, but Paleo mm-hmm. FX brings together like-minded individuals from all around the world who really just are fans of health, right? Health and wellness, right? Uh, we got right. to meet your good friend, Josh, uh, became our good friend now. Um, and I know we spoke for maybe 10, 15 minutes and we hit it off really well. And um, I think it's great because when you meet people like you, you, you have a connection because you're under the same impression of like, this is what I'm doing for my health. And this is how I'm helping other people with it. And yours was a mix of DNA, lab testing, health and nutrition, your coach, you know, all that stuff. Mine was like, well, I'm a nurse practitioner and a chiropractor, but um, I really love vitamins. And so I'd rather treat the body with vitamins. That's, that's kind of what I know. Yeah. Yeah. So tell it like, where did you, how did you go from, so you were a chiropractor first? And then you became a yeah. nurse practitioner. Yeah. So, so um, it's it's kind of a weird story. You don't really find a lot like me, I guess. There's only a yeah. handful of us that have done that. Um, I'll tell you this. I became a nurse practitioner because I wanted to help people naturally. And I 
didn't want to become a traditional doctor because I just don't agree with that mentality of, of managing sickness and just giving a pill and hoping that everything gets better. It just doesn't work that way. It, it takes a lot of work and a holistic way to look at the body is incorporating, you know, encompassing like, you know, nutrition, uh, sleep, water, flexibility, you know, exercise, things like that. And I learned the nutrition in chiropractor school. And I knew at that time um, I wanted to become a nurse practitioner so I could expand my scope of practice. I wanted to do like vitamin B12 shots and glutathione IVs. And I wasn't able to do it as a chiropractor. So mm -hmm. I started the nurse practitioner program while I was finishing up my chiropractor school. Oh, wow. So, and then I, and then I graduated like one after another. And then it led me to basically going into traditional world of medicine and thinking I could make a difference that way. It, it's kind of an uphill battle. And I said, you know yeah. what, I have a, I have an entrepreneur mindset. Um, I want to create something that is on my terms and I'm going to create my own path. And so what you saw at the booth was like a pop-up version of what my medical clinic is like. We basically wow. have like a vitamin bar instead of a family traditional medical uh, practice. Love it. Yeah. And it's, it's like, it's fun. That's what I love. I love products like yours that are like, um, you want to be healthy because you enjoy it. You know, that's so important. If you can make a product yummy and an experience, it's not like, Oh, I've got to walk over and take all my supplements. It's like, yep. Can't wait to take my supplements because it's really, yummy I know it's a great experience. So like great job on that. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I, it, where is it located? Anyway, where are you? Oh, our clinic. Oh, so um, we're in West Austin. Uh, so oh, people who okay. are familiar with the downtown area, like Palmer mm -hmm. event centers, where Pele was at, it's by uh, the lake downtown. Um, we're just a mile or two west of that. And uh, it's it's great because we're it's we're in a bubble. Like Austin's a very bu big yeah. bubble of health and wellness. It's the epicenter of health and wellness, I think, in this yeah. country. And so you have a lot of people who are gluten free and paleo and keto and take turmeric for years and do yoga and, you know, all mm -hmm. that stuff. So we kind of are preaching to the choir, but what we've created here is uh, a connection amongst other health and wellness people who gravitate towards this. And what happens is it helps kind of spread the overall message. And I feel not only am I a, a nurse practitioner and a doctor anymore, it's that I'm part of this health and wellness tribe that you're a yeah. part of, right? And, yeah. and it, to me, I think that's bigger than what medicine is. Yeah, I love that. You know, because like for me, I love teaching. I actually was going to be a teacher and used to be a teacher. And I had this plan to be a, a high school Spanish teacher. I have a degree in Spanish, right? Awesome. And, um, <laughs> and so when I was teaching it before, you know, it was always, it's kind of like reminds me of what you're saying about being a nurse practitioner in a traditional setting. And you're like, Hey, I know you just came in here to get a prescription medication, but you know, what's really awesome is to fix your nutrition. And people are like, their eyes are probably glazed over and they're like, uh-huh, cool. Yep. Give me something. But when you are on the opposite end of things, it's like your vibe attracts your tribe. And there are people that are looking to optimize themselves. There are people who are looking to learn. So now instead of me being this teacher being like, look, kids, Spanish is actually super awesome. You're going to love it. And they're like, oh, come on. Now I'm teaching, I'm teaching still, but I'm teaching health and wellness to people who want to learn it. And, you know, they say like, when the student is ready, the master appears. And it's so much easier, I'm sure, for you to do what you're good at, because now you're offering it to the right audience and <laughs> people who are yeah. looking and wanting it. I, I could tell you right now, my my elevator pitch has changed throughout the years, right? Because when I was first starting off as a chiropractor, I was talking about low back pain, knee pain, you know, neck pain. And when people found out I was a chiropractor, they're like, oh, let me ask you a question about my back. I've been having these issues. And, you know, you, it could be at a party, a get together, you know, whatever. And you just kind of like, all right, you, well, then I can help you out a little bit, you know, whatever. And you knew that I, I'm not the type of person just gives you a half ass kind of like, you know, approach, like it's like, <laughs> I'm gonna create a full picture, like this is what I would do if you're a loved one. Um, sure. And so you could see when I would tell them exactly what I think you should do, Okay, that's the reaction. Yeah, yeah, all right, I'll get it. I'll come and see you eventually. But the second I started talking about weight loss, oh wait, <laughs> I'll come and sign up right now. How many, how many times can I come <laughs> see you? And I'm just like, what? And so I kind of looked at the marketing approach and said, okay, what do people really want? They want to lose weight, they want more energy, and they want to feel better, right? And in a roundabout way, that's what nutrition really is, right? Because when you go into a traditional medical clinic, nutrition and health and wellness is not emphasized. You don't really talk about diet. You don't talk about vitamins and you sure don't really talk about sleep and going to the bathroom and hydration like it's a, like it's a necessity. Right. They say, no, right. you need to take this pill because otherwise you're going to get worse. And mm -hmm. the uh, 
conversation was not the conversation I wanted to have because when you grab someone's attention, you only have a few seconds to kind of get through to them and resonate with an emotional connection, right? Like, how am I going to connect with this person? The back pain wasn't bad enough in those people to where they were going to get off their butts and do something about it, right? But if they were tired all the time and they had horrible sleep and their mood was horrible, they were going to eventually do something because their spouse is basically going to leave them, right? So it's like, hey, you need to do something now, change your lifestyle. Well, where do I start? Well, you're not going to go to a doctor. You're going to go to a health and wellness coach. You're going to go to a personal trainer. You're going to go to a chiropractor. You're going to go to an acupuncture, someone that's going to give you more insight. And I am feel blessed to be in that position because people look at us, and you know, I say you and I, in a sense that they look for us for, for guidance. And you talk about being a teacher. My, both of my parents are educators. My mom was a kindergarten teacher for mm-hmm. 40 years. My dad was a coach mm-hmm. for 40 years. I always thought I was going to be a teacher. And so yeah. I've always made a point to educate because if there's one thing anyone can ever take away from a conversation with me, it's like maybe they took away one piece of information that they're going to learn from and maybe pass along to someone else. And in retrospect, maybe I take away one thing because I'm always a student. I got a lot of information to give, but I'm always learning just like you. So I'm always an educator and a student uh, at all times throughout the day. I love it too, because like you have the experience of working with people one-on-one so much. That's when you learn the best, you know, people will say like, oh, I'm going to go go to college for this, I'm going to college for that, I'm going to college for that. Well, there's, that's great, but you know how it is. I mean, you've been to a lot of college. Yeah, so a lot. Like, <laughs> when you're, when you're taking a test, let's say you're taking a, an exam on the thyroid, well, it's cool. It's like, yep, I remember this is the thyroid and this is how it works. And here's all the endocrinology and blah, blah. But when you have a patient that has a specific issue or a client that has a specific issue, in my case, your learning factor goes through the roof. It keeps you hungry because you're like problem solving, problem solving, problem solving. There's no, there's no question on whether or not you can retain the information. You're like, aha. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and so it's so it's so cool. And I want to, I want to commend you too. We're going from like the, the doctor route, I mean, you have the doctor, the nurse practitioner, everything's laid out. Here you go. Here's your life plan. Go ahead. And you took that and you ran with it on the entrepreneurship side of things. So you could really imp- impact people on the forefront of things. So good job. <laughs> Thank you. It's not been easy. You're an entrepreneur yourself. Uh, yeah. It's it's the hardest and most rewarding and yes. stressful thing you might ever do. Now, obviously, I, I'm not a mother. I've never had kids. So I can't imagine the transition that a woman goes through from that standpoint. But when you have a a business that you start from scratch, it's your baby, right? You're growing it, you're nurturing it, you're making sure it stays alive, it has breath. And every single day you get up and you just think, how can I improve? How can I work on this? You know, how can I make this better? And if you're passionate about it, it doesn't become work. It's more of like, this is my goal. This is my crusade even, you know, and, and I can see that from you, even the few minutes we talked and what I've seen since is that it's, it's a blessing to be an entrepreneur because not everyone has that mindset. And, and it's, it's a very difficult mindset that I had to develop over time. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, you talk about like stress and distress and you stress and I'm like, people are like, Carrie, you have so much on your plate. And I'm like, I know, but I love it. (laughs) I love it. I'm building something. I'm on a mission. You know, it's not, it's not like, dang it, I hate doing this every day. It's, oh, I can't wait to do this. I mean, I wake up, I feel like I'm waking up earlier and earlier and people give me crap about it, but I'm just like, yeah, but I love it. Like I'm on such a mission. I have, I feel like I have the universe helping and guiding me. And I know, I guarantee you feel that same way too. I feel supported on your journey. Cause when you come in the right heart space to help people, that's when the universe just starts saying yes and just starts helping you along your way. So I see oh, that, yeah. I see that with you. Well, I'll tell you this Tara, and for anyone who is listening, the law of attraction and manifestation is a real thing. And I will tell you every entrepreneur, business owner, uh, independent thinker that I've ever met has some way that they manifest things into their life. And if you want to know what manifestation is, it's basically that you believe that something can happen. You believe something will happen. And it's incredible because it's this thought process that, like I said, I had to develop, right? How am I going to open a business and expect it to succeed, right? Do I, do I wish that it happens? That's half of it, right? Mm -hmm. Then the manifestation part is not just saying, I want it to happen bad enough. It's like, what are you doing and putting forth the energy to make it happen? So every day when you get up early, I'm sure you have a routine, right? Self-affirmations, things you tell Mm -hmm. yourself, right? Like every morning from the beginning, right? Yeah. Well, I didn't have that at first because Mm -hmm. here's the thing. The truth is I was very insecure when I first started off in practice. 
just like any naive, you know, wet behind the ears kid that comes out of school thinking they can change the world and they have all the information and tools to do it, you're going against 20, 30 years of experience from a guy next door that's saying, no, I know how to do it. You don't know what you're doing. I have yes. been in clinic for 30 years. You don't know anything. But here's the truth. If you believe in everything that you're doing for the greater good of the bigger outcome, then you tune out all the naysayers. And then you basically take all that and use it as a motivation, right, to fuel you, which is hard to do because imagine how many times you've ever heard your, someone tell you no. No, Tara, mm -hmm. I don't believe what you're doing. I know I don't agree. Why would you do that, Tara? Why would you do that? No one's ever done that before. Why do you think about it that way? And it's interesting mm -hmm. because at first I was so insecure, like, well, maybe I don't know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about. Maybe I'm not like up to the task of doing this. Maybe I am full of it. Right. And after a while, you know, I kind of started putting myself in a position to where I got in my comfort zone. And I said, look, if you're going to know if you have what it takes, you got to do it. And so I basically like quit a job, went full time doing this. And it's been the best decision ever. And I get to help people every day improve their lives in a healthier sense. And the weird thing is in medicine, when I was in medicine, I didn't help people. I didn't, I didn't feel like I helped them, even though I tried. I felt like medicine wasn't helping people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had somebody just like the other day comment on my magnesium post and was like, I asked my doctor how much magnesium take and he wouldn't get an answer with because he didn't know. <laughs> like, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> well, so, um, it's I true. <laughs> well, okay, let, me, let me share one story with you. It's funny you say that, Tara. Yeah. So, all right. So right before this call, this is why I was kind of delayed. Um, so I had a patient and it's funny. I don't like calling them patients. I like calling them clients like you, right? Like what you say, because they're, mm. they're people, right? They're patients. Yeah. They're not, they're not all sick, right? They have some sick. issues, but, <laughs> yeah. but they're not like, they're not broken. Right. And so <laughs> this, this client came in and said, um, you know, they said, well, I saw my doctor in Dallas and this person's been on this medication for a long time. And it's a very serious medication, but it was an experimental medication, almost like a chemo drug given to this person because they didn't know what was wrong with this person. So they kind of said, well, you might have this rare disorder. We're not really sure about it. We're going to put you on this medication just to see if it can maybe help you with your symptoms. This was five years ago. This person went and saw the doctor this past week. And unbeknownst to this doctor, she was seeing me for these same issues. And we were just applying vitamins. And but the right kind for her needs. And um, the patient came back and said, I'm getting off my medication in a month. My test, whatever, went through the roof It improved 30, 40 percent. Mm -hmm. And the doctor is flabbergasted, doesn't believe that it was just the vitamins that did this. And now, like, I'm singing your praises. I looked at her and I said, thank you. And she was this is validation for you. Right. I said, no. Ten years ago my insecure self would have been thriving for this validation. <laughs> I looked at her and said, you're going to change the world because you're going to spread this message, not me. Right. right? right. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's the weird thing about it is that in the line of work that we do, it's almost, we get a lot of thanks, but it's not enough for us. Regardless of whether you're an entrepreneur or not, it's like, hey, there's still more work that needs to be done because I got to help someone else and I got to help someone else. Yeah. And it's one of those things that we are on a crusade. And so I feel like every day when we do get up, I, I'm invigorated to start the day because there's no telling what's going to come through those doors and what I'm going to encounter and what's going to make me like elevate my professionalism to another level. Right. Yeah. And don't you feel like there's such a huge shift happening right now? Like people are getting it. They're realizing, oh, I would rather just pay for health on the front end and live an amazing high quality life then have to pay a bunch of doctor's bill when I have cancer or some disease down the road. I remember like one of my very first personal training clients, she was like, she expressed that to me. And I was like, oh, I am in the right profession. She gets it. She gets it. I was yeah. like, this is cool. Okay, people yeah. already are aware and they're looking for someone to help them. This is amazing. And so I think it's cool that you're on you're in front of that shift right so you're not only not only are you in front of the shift and i want to talk about some of the stuff that you offer because i really want to geek out and get nerdy with you here in a minute okay but i it not only are you saying here i'll help you on the front end but i'm also going to make it an experience for you i'm also going to pamper you you're this is going to feel like self-care to the max because you are going to feel like you are at a spa 
right now while you give your vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm yeah. really curious, because did you, do you still do IV infusions or did you start doing that and then move into the drinks or how did that evolution go for you? So it was the IVs first. Um, uh -huh. So when the backstory is this, the, I don't know if you met Baldo there, but he's my best friend. He's my business mm -hmm. partner. He was there. He kind of looks like me. So everyone thinks that we're brothers. So we basically just say we're brothers. Um, but uh, he has been in sales. And so when I came up with this idea to open a vitamin bar, and I say that in quotation marks, um, it's never been done before. And at the time, this was kind of before the craze of the IV clinics popping up mm -hmm. everywhere. So like most people just knew about hangover bags and stuff like that. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, I, I want to apply to it because I don't want to just have a bunch of hungover people come in. Right. Like that's not <laughs> who comes and sees me, if, who is healthy. Right. Like I, I hate right. to say it. Right. But drinking is not a sign of health. Like it's just no. not. Right. And so people who are healthy don't drink. They need other stuff in their system. And so the IV clinic was started off the idea that you can get a great vitamin from a great place. And what we found was that people like it. And what we wanted to do was emphasize a place of health and wellness that uh, people could feel like they could come and hang out at like a lounge. And so mm -hmm. when we started it, if you're a, if you're a health nut and you lift weights, you go to the gym, right? Gym rats, right? If you love smoothies and protein smoothies, I guess you go to a smoothie bar, right? But it's like, well, what if you don't work out in the gym all the time? And what if you're not drinking protein smoothie after a smoothie, where do you go and hang out and talk about health? And so we created a place for people, not for us, for people to come and experience what health and wellness really should be. And in the whole encompassment of looking at the whole picture. And so the drinks created a whole nother dynamic, but we would not be in that position if it weren't for the drinks today, because when me and Baldo got together, we thought we were going to open a bar back in college because we used mm -hmm. to drink and now we don't drink. So we're like, well, let's still open something that would be fun so we opened the vitamin bar and added the IVs, the shots, and then eventually we came up with the drinks. And we wanted to make an experience to when people show up, they really feel like they can, you know, get the most out of it and, and really have like, a, you know, an instant gratification, if you will. I love it. So you went from wanting to open a bar <laughs> with alcohol to the most opposite thing in the world which is a bar full of vitamin infusions for people. Yeah. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I, I look at this and Love say, it. okay. And, I, and it's not, it's like this. If somebody were to come in and want an experience anywhere in life, right? You go to a movie, you go to a concert, you go to a football game, whatever, like you take away that memory, right? Well, the thing is people seek out health. And so they'll go out of their ways to find new things like cryotherapy, infrared sauna, you know, uh, whatever right and so for us we're like we'll include vitamins in that mix and you know what vitamins can also be really fun for you and we put a spin on it to basically say well if somebody shows up to a bar and they want to get drunk they're going to spend the money to feel drunk because they that's what they think makes them feel good well what if you did the same thing with vitamins what if they felt drunk off of healthy vitamins and that drunkness was more of like serotonin boosting and better mood which led to better sleep and all that so you kind of think like, well, that makes sense, but it's like, how do you apply it, right? It's like, well, you and I have to know the science and how chemically, how we function. And if you can create those reactions in the body, you can create instant gratification and vitamin IVs. That's why people love them. Because if you come in and get an IV, you feel the difference within like an hour, right? Like, I mean, I, I'm sure you've had, I'm sure you've uh -huh. had them before too. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So let's get geeky for a second. Cause some, some okay. people listening might not even know what we're talking about or why it's like, okay, you go to, you get an IV full of vitamins. Why? Right. So let's talk about what they are. Like why, why would you get an IV infusion versus just maybe taking some supplements at your house? So a vitamin IV is the best way to put vitamins into your body because they go directly into your bloodstream. And when you go directly into the bloodstream, when it comes to absorption, you're talking close to 100%. You know, I don't like to use exact numbers, but roughly 100%, mm -hmm. which means that the blood takes the vitamins directly to the brain and the heart and where it needs it the most in the body. When you take a pill, you orally have to break down that. And eventually it has to be absorbed in your digestive tract. Think about how many people have horrible digestive tracts. Think about how much crap is in the food and the pills that we're eating. And then your liver has to be healthy enough to break all that down because in medicine, there's something called a first pass metabolism, which all your medications have to go through the liver. And 
if all of that works well, then you have the ability to absorb the oral vitamins you're taking. Well, you can bypass the whole digestive tract and just take vitamin IVs and absorbs, you know, immediately. And with vitamin IVs, you can get higher dosages. So like, for example, if you took vitamin C as an oral supplement, you could only take so much before you get what diarrhea, right? Sorry. So okay. can you, can you back up for me? You were saying that, um, you, everything has to go through the liver. Everything has to go through the digestive tract. And that's where I lost you after that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the reason why IVs are great because it's the best way to get absorption in your body. It goes in the bloodstream directly. You're going to get uh, fast absorption to the brain and the heart. Oral digestion, like taking oral pills, it has to go through your digestive tract and be broken down. And it takes a while to do that. Plus, your liver has to work hard to break it down. And your digestive tract has to be healthy enough to actually absorb it and process it, which most people's liver and guts are messed up. So you have to work through all that and an IV basically bypasses all that. So you can also do higher dosages of a vitamin IV. So like for example, vitamin C, if you take an oral supplement, usually the sort of the supplements 500 milligrams or a thousand. And if you take more than like 3000 milligrams in a day, some people have diarrhea mm -hmm. because of the digestive issue. Right. But you can do like 30 grams and I say grams of vitamin C in an IV and be okay because you bypass the digestive tract. Wow. And then how often do you recommend people do something like that? So some people, depending on their nutritional needs, can get an IV, you know, once a week, at least. Um, I've seen research articles that have given vitamin IVs on a daily basis to people who were chronically ill, and it really helped them. Um, a lot of people can choose to, you know, kind of space it out depending on how they absorb it and how they metabolize it. So the way that we work here is that we do labs alongside the vitamin IVs to see if it's actually working. Yeah. So we get baseline tests and you and I both know data is everything. So we get a baseline test and then uh, we recheck them again after a couple of months to see if we're making a difference. This is what, this is where I went nuts at, <laughs> at paleo effect. When you mentioned this, because I was like, wait, what? I thought you guys were just this cool little posh little drink. Are you telling me you actually give people, you let them know the results? Cause that's huge. That's I've been to a lot of vitamin IV places, but they don't do that. You just are like, oh yeah, B12 sounds good. Glutathione sounds good. Oh yeah, I'll do the B vitamin cocktail. Well, for one, most people don't even know if they really need that thing. They walk in like, sure. uh, sure, that sounds good. I, yep, I'll get the beauty elixir, you know? <laughs> they have no yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then there's no way to test to see if they even had an effect from it. So I love that you guys do that. Do yeah, and that's all cool. Wait, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say the fact that we the fact that we do it, it adds validity behind what we're doing. Right. Because yeah. vitamins already already get a bad rap from the traditional, you know, conservative group. Um, they you know, I mean, I saw an article last week that said vitamins are a waste of money. And I'm thinking like, well, what vitamins are you taking? Right. So like B12, for example, you, you mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. Everyone takes B12 on a multivitamin level or a shot. They've taken it for energy. Right. But the, the mind to me, the science nerd in me says well, why do they feel energy off that B12 shot? What is the chemical reactions going on in the body that causes them to feel better? And so the science behind all of it is that I want to know how the body works because I love biochemistry. And vitamins are essentially our biochemistry and how we function. So if your vitamins are off and you're depleted, you won't function better. And so people who get that, they tend to actually get something that's a lot better for them to, to function with. And so like, for example, if somebody was depleted in like, let's say, I don't know, B12, let's just use that for a prime example. Most people think about anemia, right? Pernicious anemia is the one that comes to mind. A lot of people still are iron deficient. But the thing is, B12 is not the only vitamin out there you can take, right? Like B12 is an easy fix. You take it and anemia, especially anemic people are like, oh, I take B12, my levels are fine. But if you get B12 to someone who has depression, it's like the light comes on for them. They're like, whoa, I wasn't bounced off the walls, but I was super happy. Was that because I'm deficient in B12? It's like, maybe the B12 for you gives you serotonin production. For other people, it restores their red blood cells. It has multifunctions. And so if you understand that, then it, and especially when I was in school, I was like, whoa, what other vitamins are out there that can do this? So like I started doing more research and for the past 15 years, while I was learning traditional medicine, I was like, I'm really going to apply vitamins as my medicine 
because to me, vitamins are medicine. Yeah. And when I was looking at the labs, I was measuring diabetes. I was measuring hormone imbalances. I was measuring biomarkers of inflammation specific to the brain. And I was finding that all these things tested nutrients like vitamin B12, B9, CoQ10, vitamin D, omega-3s. And it's funny because everyone thinks about like that as a pill, as a supplement. And I'm like, no, I'm looking at it saying you're diabetic because you're deficient in this and deficient in that. And maybe if you restore that, maybe it will help you with your blood sugar control. Right. Exactly. That's, you know, people are like, I, I get that argument a lot because especially in like the paleo, sometimes the keto community too, or we're, we're really big on food quality, which is great. So people are like, I'm good. Like I eat such a healthy diet. And it's like, <laughs> if you understand like the depletion of the soils and just how much we're chronically depleted, the, depleted from our high stress lifestyles and our lack of sleep and our, all of it, the 12 cups of coffee you had yesterday, you know, yep, all those yep. things, it's like, uh, to me, I look at it this way. And I feel like we are the most fortunate human beings ever in the history of our, of humankind, because we have more accessible to us than like royalty from most generations of time of human beings. Like the fact that I'm looking at my, my cabinet over there right now, when it's got, it's just like bursting with all sorts of supplements, like how lucky are we? I look at it as food, you know, it's like the, it's the missing little pieces of my food, even though, yes, I eat super healthy. There's no way, there's no way I'm going to get all that for my food. And then when we start digging into DNA and other issues that you're having in your body, it's like I could eat red meat all day long, but I'm not going to have the B12 that I need. I need a methylated version. And that, that was life changing for me when I started taking methylated B12. And I do go to get the glutathione infusions with B12. And it's, you know, I, it's, for me, honestly, actually, after getting a B12 infusion, I get so leveled out. It's not actually energetic. I get so leveled out that I kind of have to cancel the rest of my day. It just super relaxes me. Yep. Um, and so like when you start feeling things like that, you think, hmm, I don't think I'm actually getting as much from my food as I thought I was yeah. when you get that yeah. big of a boost or um, a reaction from taking a simple, a simple little vitamin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I see you hit it on the nail because we and you and I both know because we've worked in nutritional clients. Um the ones that come in and say, I eat super clean. I like, let's talk about your diet. You've heard this. Oh, I eat clean. Well, tell me <laughs> what kind of clean food do you eat? And like, you know, they sprinkle in pretty healthy stuff. And then, of course they eat some bad stuff every now and then, but even the ones who are like, I eat macrobiotic foods straight out of the garden, <laughs> never been refrigerated, cooked, no oils, <laughs> you know, like I use the herbs in my herb garden and like I all cook it outside standing under the sun without a shirt on, you know, I'm like, yeah, but like your soil is so bad. It, you're not going to get any nutrients out of what you really think you're eating. Like it, we, we can test for it. And so what I do is I test for it and say, guess what, vegan, you're not getting enough carnitine in your <laughs> diet and that's affecting your heart. Guess what, vegan, you also need omega threes. Well, I'll take algae. That's not enough. You need to take an actual fish oil. And so mm -hmm. people who even on the flip side, let's say you eat the carnivore diet, right? And I know there's, there's, talks about keto and how wonderful it is. Well, you and I both know you can't just eat dairy and meat the entire time on a keto <laughs> diet. And expect to be healthy, right. Yeah. And it's like, when in doubt, always go plant-based heavy, but there's certainly nutritional value out of meat products and animal products. There just has to be a nice balance. And when I test for this stuff, I say, well, what is the meat doing internally when they try to digest it? Does it cause inflammation in the body? So you look at things like barbecue, for example, and this is the geeky part of me that's coming out. So like there is a direct connection between barbecue and heart disease. One of the issues that happens is when you break down food in your gut, there's a byproduct of something called TMAO. And it's a, it's a, like a free radical enzyme that comes out from the gut. Because remember in chemistry, just like our bodies, there's an action and a reaction. So the TMAO is a byproduct of our breakdown of food. And if you have a high enough of it, or genetically you make more of it, or your nutrition causes you to produce more of it because it only comes from meat products and animal products, then you're going to produce more inflammation. Mix in genetics, and if you already have risk for heart disease, now you're basically adding a tipping point. You don't work out, and you don't exercise, and you get poor sleep, lack of hydration. Oh, man, you're definitely going to be in poor shape. And so when people talk about saying, well, I'm keto, if they're eating brisket after sausage link after sausage link, I'm like, you're inflaming your heart. You're inflaming your gut. 
if you eat sardines, sashimi, grass-fed beef, you know, pasture, you know, pasteurized, you know, pasture-free, you know, raised chickens, mm -hmm. um, then essentially like that's a better source. And if you measure blood work and you see the inflammatory pathways building, you can catch hopefully some ma major event from happening and that's preventative medicine. Yeah, that's beautiful. And yes, I run across that all the time. You know, I have clients come to me and they've been living off their cheese and nut diet, AKA keto, you know, and their LDL is three, 400, something crazy high. And it's like so living off of sauce. You're right. Processed meats and cheese and nuts is not a well-formulated diet. And sure you might get skinny because you're not eating carbs, but that doesn't mean you're healthy on the inside. So, um, Let's let's dig into a little bit of like the DNA stuff. So where 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 does that come into the mix with what you do? So I use this acronym. Um, it's called GIN, G I N, Genetics, Inflammation, and Nutrition. That's pretty much what's going to define you and your health, your personal health, right? Because genetics are what you're dealt with, right? You always talk about people, you know, who are diabetic, right? And and you say, all right, well, diabetes runs in my family. And I'm like, well, the problem is no one runs in your family. All of y'all are overweight and unhealthy. That's why you all have diabetes, right? Oh, well, genetics are, a, you know, an influence. Well, that's true, but it won't define you, right? Because if I have risk for cancer and I don't get it, what did I do differently than the other people? I lowered the inflammation going to my body and I restored my nutritional deficiencies, right? So you have to understand genetics in a sense of, this is how you're going to metabolize things in your body. So for example, let's take uh, the MTHFR gene, which is a genetic test. It's a very common test that most people have probably been tested for in the last 10 or 15 years. It's becoming more mainstream, but it's only one little piece of the puzzle. And so years ago, when someone would do a, a MTHFR gene, they would tend to say, all right, well, if I methylate differently, like there's a gene that's off, right? What will happen is I need a certain kind of methylated B12 or methyl B9 in order to function better. And I say, okay, well, that's true. But the thing is, is that I can't just expect you to just take B9 or B12 and hopefully everything works out because what the methylation factor is, is how you metabolize and produce ATP, antioxidants, and neurotransmitters in your body. So what will happen in genes is that gene is off and it's known as the MTHFR gene. If that gene is off, what would typically happens is that if you take that B9 and you take that methyl B12 into your body, that gene might have a hiccup. And yeah, the B12 and the B9 is supposed to make ATP, but you have a genetic issue and maybe a cofactor deficiency that shunts that B12 and B9 into something inflammatory or unuseful, right? So genetics basically determine the pathways and determinants of what's going to occur in our body. And it's interesting because once you have those genes, like a mutated MTHFR gene, we're finding that their symptoms correlated with this in medicine, like depression, anxiety, IBS, um, uh, adrenal fatigue, fibromyalgia, chronic pain. And it's weird because I don't look at someone as saying you're a chronic pain patient. I'm just going to say you have a mutated gene. What does that mean? Well, that means you're not going to have as much inflammation or you're not going to have as much antioxidant production to reduce all that chronic inflammation you're dealing with. And that's why your autoimmune disorder is not going to get any better. And so if you look at genetics, that tells you a third of the picture, right? And so gene testing in the last, I don't know, maybe less than 10 years has become so important because it's not what your mom and dad gave you. It's what you have in your body that's going to separate you from how someone else metabolizes that same B12. So how do, how could people know, I mean, would they have to come to someone like you who's an expert on it? So let's, let's say they've done their genetic testing and they found out that they have, hey, <laughs> that they have the MCHFR <laughs> mutation. That's, that's all though. Um, yeah. Hi. hi. <laughs> um, how will people know if okay, well, because like maybe they hear you say that they're like, shoot, maybe I shouldn't take B12 and B9. Like, how do they know what to do after they found out? Maybe because you're right, MPHFR is super common. What should they yeah. do? So, functional medicine is a term that has been used for I don't know, last 10 or 15 uh, years for you know, just uh, 
the idea of holistic health and wellness in the medical world. It's weird. As chiropractors, we weren't told what we were doing was functional medicine. We were just told it's just health and wellness. But yet uh, traditional medicine came in and gave it a label. In that label, they started testing all these things like MTHFR. And 10 years ago, they just said, hey, you have a mutated gene, you need methyl B9, methyl B12, and hopefully that takes care of everything. In fact, they just say methyl B9 more than anything else. Mm-hmm. But people then get better off of that. And so I'm like, all right, cool. So what is the bigger issue here? Well, I'll show you something which is really interesting. For the viewers at home, you, you can see this. For the listeners, you won't. But I'm holding up a picture of what's called the methylation cycle. This is biochemistry. This is what I've studied for the past 15 years. But this is a chart of a biochemical reaction that occurs predominantly in our liver. This is the methylation cycle. And in the methylation cycle, really pretty much in the middle here in this tiny little spot, that's the MTHFR gene. These are cycles that basically work like a car would. Imagine gears cranking, your basic, your body's a car. And so there's all these systems in place in order for you to function. And the methylation cycle is one of them. I call it the transmission, whatever, right? Well, what happens is if your transmission or one of the cycles is off, it throws everything else off, right? It affects this, it affects that. So maybe what will happen is the chain of events that occurred wasn't because you were only deficient in B9. What if you were also deficient in B12? What if you were also deficient in B6? What if you were deficient in one of these other cofactors that's important in making sure this cycle runs? Some of the cofactors that are in here are magnesium, zinc, copper. These are cofactors because they're important in the production of ATP, of neurotransmitter production like serotonin. And what I found from learning about the methylation cycle is that if someone's deficient in B9, B6, B12, zinc, magnesium, or copper, they're not going to have the serotonin production. They're not going to have the ATP production. They're not going to have the autoimmune protection from glutathione pr- protection. But if you're just looking at one little gene in that big cycle of things that we're looking at, you're going to miss the big picture. And so as we've evolved with our lab testing, the improvement as far as treatment has not come from the practitioner side. It's come from the consumer side. Because what will happen is you take that genetic test of the MTHFR gene and you go to the doctor and the doctor's like, we don't know what to do with it. It'll just give you B9, B12. I I didn't get any better. Okay, now what? You basically took a 23andMe test and they gave you a bunch of genes and then you submit it to someone else's database like Ben Lynch or someone. And then they read it for you and they say, okay, based off your genes, here's the health risk you're at risk for. You're at risk for depression. You're at risk for IBS. You know, you don't metabolize salt enough, right? Which I saw one mm-hmm. of the things in there, one mm-hmm. of your tests, right? And it's funny because it's metabolism. That's what we're really looking at. It's like, this is how I function, right? And so you have to figure out what you're depleted in, what gene is off in you, and then what it kind of disease or inflammation is it leading to, right? Because if you're just saying, hey, I'm giving a bunch of B12 and B9 because I know I need to methylate correctly, well, what are you trying to methylate to? What's your, what do you, do you need more energy? Do you need more serotonin production? Well, yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, and that's what you have to find out. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Let's, can we use me as an example <laughs> of what of you're course. talking about here? Since we're talking yeah. about these cofactors, we've got some uh, magnesium and all the, all the minerals for my hair mineral analysis. And then we also have my um, DNA report, which both of these have been on podcasts that we released before yours. So if anybody listening wants to hear like the rundown from the two guys who did these tests, um, there's a podcast from Dr. Anthony J. I don't know if you know him. He was at Paleo FX. He's wonderful. You would love him. Um, he works out at the Mayo Clinic and he was doing DNA stuff for the government, like with Alzheimer's testing and virus and all this stuff. And he's just a really nice person. And then the other one comes from Barton Scott from Upgraded Formulas and he does these nano minerals. So, yeah. um, so anyway, I'm curious to see what your thoughts are looking at those tests. If there was anything right. that was like, a, well, a let, let me, let me bring up your test right now. And actually Barton was on our podcast two weeks ago. Oh, it was? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're good friends with Barton too. So um, so I'm looking at the labs and I'm thanking you for letting me talk about this. So you have yeah. some genetic, you have some genetic panels in here. And then uh, you did the hair analysis test uh, with with Barton here from Upgraded. And uh, I noticed a couple of things, like I'm just going to say uh, you're low in sodium and potassium. 
which are two uh, essential amino, I mean, uh, uh, minerals, electrolytes, and sodium, potassium are, they have a ratio in the body, right? And you have to have a certain ratio in order to function because there's sodium and potassium that are basically sitting outside and inside the cell. And if you think about it, we have millions of cells in our body. If sodium and potassium have to be in balance in order for our cells to be healthy, then you need a sufficient amount of both of them in order to function, right? Well, you have low amounts. One of the genes that you tested for in here is going to say, hey, you need basically more salt and to drink more water because of your positive MAO gene, right? Mm -hmm. And this one's the uh, monoamino oxidase A gene. Uh, and it's also, they talked about your COMT gene. So the interesting thing about it with MAO, it's also a derivative of serotonin. So if you want to put into another perspective, let's go one step further. It's saying, hey, you need more salt and potassium in your diet, right? Because you don't have enough from your electrolyte balance. We can see that. Well, I'm going to say, well, Tara, do you have depression? Do you have low mood? And you're like, well, yeah, I get that from time to time. Well, maybe the low sodium and potassium is related to your genetic issue with your MAO gene. And maybe you need a lot more of that because your demand for serotonin production in your body is a lot higher than most people's and you're chronically deficient in sodium and potassium, which means maybe your serotonin production is being compromised. Hmm. So then I apply yeah, it towards depression and mood. You could take uh -huh. it one step further. If serotonin converts eventually to melatonin, if I say, hey, Tara, are you having trouble sleeping? You're going to say, yeah. It, could it be the sodium potassium? Like, yeah, it could be, or it could be the idea that you're low in magnesium as well. And magnesium is a cofactor that helps convert serotonin over to melatonin. And maybe you need to supplement with more magnesium and that will help you sleep better at night. Yeah, that's awesome. I haven't noticed any sort of like depression, but I'm like, hey, maybe, I don't know, maybe if I had more of this stuff, I would feel better than I do already. And I would say the magnesium, so Barton's had me taking a bunch of his magnesium since we got this test. And so I'm experimenting with that right now. And I, I definitely don't have a problem. Once I'm asleep, I am asleep. I mean, there could be an yeah. earthquake and I, I would not know. But as far as like winding down and shutting off my brain at a nice old nine o'clock, like some people can do, doesn't happen, <laughs> right? But well, the magnesium definitely has helped. <laughs> so, so let's take this one step further. So this is a fun game I like to do. So mm -hmm. a lot of times I get labs before I even know what's going on with the person, right? Like, cause like when we talked like, we didn't say like, oh, this is what's going on with me, blah, blah, yeah. blah. This is like me guessing. So like, yeah. let's take the magnesium, for example, all right? So let's say the magnesium is a cofactor for glutathione production, all right? Glutathione is like the mother of all antioxidants we produce in our body, right? It crosses the blood brain barrier, can detox the brain, but predominantly it's found in the liver. Well, let's say you have low magnesium. And magnesium is a cofactor in order for your body to produce more glutathione. So I might say, hey, do you have problems getting sick all the time? Yeah, I get allergies all the time. Okay, cool. Do you ever have brain fog? Yeah, I feel like I have this cloggy, you know, froggy brain all the time. Okay, cool. Um, do you drink a lot? Yeah, I drink a lot. Well, that's going to affect your liver, which affects your glutathione production, right? So there was something in here, too, that talked about your glutathione as well. And it mm -hmm. said here that based off your genes – your glutathione as transferase phosphate gene, or GSTPI, says you're at risk for heavy metal overload. If you need to, you should supplement with liposomal glutathione, which is funny because you're thinking, okay, cool. What happens if you don't make enough glutathione? Then I say, okay, Tara, do you have any autoimmune disorders? No. Okay. Um, do, you, do you have chronic <laughs> fatigue? No. Do you have digestive issues? I don't. Do you have brain fog? Mm, sometimes if I don't sleep enough, for sure. <laughs> okay. And then you would say, next thing you say, do you have liver issues? Do you have chronic pain? Like you basically run through the gamuts yeah. of saying there's uh -huh. something here, right? Because if yeah. it's a guessing game, you're saying, well, all I'm saying is here's what I see in your labs. And here's what I understand that magnesium can help attribute and produce with. So- uh -huh. You basically ask the person, are you dealing with any of this stuff? Because on the flip side, let's say you come in and say, hey, I have serotonin issues, right? Because I have low mood. And if that's the case, then then you say, OK, well, let's go to your pathways. Let's go to those pathways that are specific for serotonin production. Here it is. Oh, yeah. The cofactor magnesium is low. Maybe that's a contributing factor. Oh, P5P, which is vitamin B6. You're low in that, too. Guess what? That's probably also contributing as well. So you can work either backwards or forward. 
you're probably not the greatest example because you're pretty healthy and you understand a lot of this stuff. So you probably already addressed it. But I wonder how you were yeah. 10 or 15, 20 years ago. Absolutely. Before I got healthy and I was living that like Taco Bell, McDonald's, Little Caesars life. All I mean, all that stuff you're talking about. Yep. So you're exactly right. It was um, may maybe not the digestion, but definitely like um, I would just like cry spontaneously before bed. I had anxiety. I didn't even realize that wasn't normal. I just thought they were my legitimate feelings. <laughs> and now I look back <laughs> on that and I was like, oh, I was not doing so hot back then. I did not realize that. I was anxious. I was worried all the time. And, and I don't have that anymore. But you're right. I am like, I might not be 100%. It's so funny to me too, as a keto coach that I'm like, I mean, I am with my electrolyte powders and my magnesium and sodium <laughs> potassium. I'm like, real salting it during the day. And the fact that I'm still low is so interesting to me, you know, because it's such a priority in my daily routine. But I kind of wonder, like with having that MAO and that um, COMP-T issue and then being keto for as long as I was, if that just was like maybe a little too much for me. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm going to show you something else here. So like I said, I studied this chart and I really, I love this chart on this chart. And I, I don't know if this is backwards for you or not, but I'm just going to show you this one little piece. So up here, there's something called homocysteine. Okay. Uh -huh. Homocysteine is a blood test and a, and a, and a urine test you can measure. It's, a, it's an inflammation marker. Uh, usually it's elevated with heart disease and even brain uh, inflammation. It's a hallmark of Alzheimer's. And it's a measurement that you can check to see whether or not you have inflammation building in your body. And for this approach, homocysteine, eventually is a precursor to something called cysteine, which is called NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Mm -hmm. Homocysteine leads to NAC, and then NAC is a precursor to glutathione. Okay, so what happens is this. If somebody's homocysteine is elevated, you're thinking, okay, they have inflammation building, right? What's going to happen? Well, you know, inflammation builds, maybe it's heart disease, brain health, or whatever. Well, if I look at it from a clinical standpoint and say, okay, Tara, your homocysteine is really elevated. Is it the sodium potassium that's depleted that's causing you to not be able to convert the homocysteine to cysteine to glutathione? Possibly. But along that pathway, there's this little thing right here called magnesium, right? Mm -hmm. If you're deficient mm -hmm. in it like you are, you're saying, hey, I'm taking all these supplements and I'm hoping mm -hmm. that I'm going to produce antioxidants. Why am I still not producing enough? It's saying mm -hmm. it's not just one or two cofactors. There might be a third. And so when you talk about customizing your vitamins... This is what we do with our labs and our, our IVs. They're going to say, hey, I've been taking a multivitamin. I've been taking selenium. I've been taking zinc. I've been taking magnesium. Well, electrolyte balance is a very definitive range. If you truly have sodium or potassium deficiency, that's a neurological condition. Like, you know, these people, that is a fine line. So I don't really like to mess with mm -hmm. electrolytes too much, but I'll mess with B vitamins and amino acids all day. And what I've noticed is if you restore magnesium plus the B6, that will help you convert the homocysteine to cysteine to glutathione. And I love and that. that's how I, love, I look at it. I love that. Thank you for that insight. Um, I remember I did a Charles Poliquin's metabolic analytics course, and he was talking about magnesium being one taking the longest of all the minerals to replace, to replenish, to actually get it back up to healthy levels. Do you, have you had any experience with that? Do you guys work with magnesium and potassium? So with your clients? we do. We do. It's funny. Um, the Myers cocktail that most people get, it's an IV that it's been kind of standard for about 50 years. Uh, John Myers, a physician, uh, developed it. It has magnesium and calcium in it. It's kind of like a multivitamin. It has a bunch of B vitamins as well. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, I, I'm kind of cautious about giving magnesium and calcium and electrolytes, you know, just overdoing it. Like we do have a magnesium right. supplement we promote, which is great, but I just try not to overdo it. So when it comes to measuring magnesium and all that stuff too, I can supplement it and know that if it's making a difference because I'll recheck the levels. But keep in mind, mm -hmm. if I'm restoring magnesium levels and I know it's a cofactor for production of other things, what am I really looking for here? Because if I restore your magnesium levels, I'm going to say, hey, great, Tara, your magnesium's in range. How, <laughs> what did that help? Right? What, right? what are you dealing with that it helped with? Right? That's right. how I look at the end product. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So if people are hearing this and they're like, Oh, I want him to look at my stuff. Do they have to come to Austin? <laughs> um, you know what? I could tell you this right now. If you uh, if you want to come to Austin, you're more than welcome to come here, and I will give you the whole sit down, thirty minutes, forty five minutes, an hour to answer all your questions. Um, 
you can send me labs, you can call me like, you know, I can only do so much, right? Yeah. Because I, so there's one thing I can tell you this. If anyone ever asks and they want to know, you can send me any of your labs. You can send me anything that you had uh, in the past five, 10 years, your whole life. I mean, people will send me booklets, PowerPoints, spreadsheets, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's incredible, right? Because pretty much health nuts are geeks at heart. Yeah. So we have all this data that we, you know, collect organized in, in fashion. <laughs> and so if anyone ever wanted to, you could email me or send me a message. I'll try to review as best as I can and give you recommendations. I won't prescribe anything but I will give you all the recommendations I can. And uh, most likely it'll probably be like referring back to wonderful people like you, Tara, that say like, look, Tara is very capable of, of basically overseeing all this. She understands it all. It's more of like, I'm kind of like the middle person that kind of guides someone along the right path, right? Because they have the information. They're just saying, is there something I'm missing? Maybe they listen to this podcast and they caught one thing they, they needed, or maybe it's like, hey, I spoke to John for five minutes and he told me all about you know magnesium and vitamin B6 and how I should be taking both of them. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, but before we end, I want to talk a little bit about Slenderella because <laughs> I love it, and I don't feel like we've really gotten at the point across of what it is. So, what is what kind of product do you have there with Slender Slenderella? Okay, so just to preface this, what you just asked me the question before you said, "How do they come and see me?" I've mm -hmm. run into that problem forever. There's only one of me. I can't duplicate myself. I've tried. <laughs> and uh, the way I duplicate myself is we created a supplement and it's called Slenderella. And I can say this full heartedly that it is one of the most wonderful, incredible things I've ever introduced into my life because it's a liver detox lifestyle supplement line. And it's a mouthful. But think about this. Slenderella encompasses and embodies the three pillars of liver detox, energy, weight loss, and basically anti-inflammation. And so anytime that you take a Slenderella product, a vitamin with Slenderella, it's going to emphasize the liver detox aspect of what vitamins should be able to do. So for example, we talked about the methylation cycle, the MTHFR gene. Well, you can find methyl B12 in a lot of our products, but you're going to find things like N-acetylcysteine, in our products, which is one of the liver detoxers we talked about, right? You'll find glutathione in our boost product because glutathione's found in the liver. You'll find a magnesium blend because it helps as a cofactor in liver detox, right? But what we pride ourselves on is this. Before people start saying, oh, it's another supplement company, he's, you know, hawking and all that. I'll tell you this. I, I get where you're coming from. But the truth is you're going to take supplements at one point in your life. Make sure you're taking good supplements. The truth is, I don't care if you take any of our supplements. You just better make sure you're taking the right kind of supplement and it's a quality one because I can tell you this. I know Slenderella is a quality product. I know it's one of the best because I take it. I've tested it in the labs. So when we, when we do this, we say, okay, let's take high quality products that are effective, but then also make people feel better pretty quickly, which is also hard to do in a vitamin supplement, right? Most people say I take a multivitamin and I don't feel much. Well, I'll show you this, the drink we were talking about, this is a Slenderita. This is a Slenderella boost. It's a vitamin energy mix. This thing has all your B vitamins, P5P. It has all the active forms of the B vitamins. It also has the electrolytes, but it has like glutathione in there. It has taurine, it has arginine, it has carnitine. Those are essential amino acids and antioxidants that we need in order to function. I can tell you this, when you see the difference in quality, does your multivitamin have glutathione in it? I mean, that's, and if you've never heard of it, then you're taking the wrong thing, right? So that's one aspect, but all of them kind of do something different. For example, the Bliss, the Bliss is probably my favorite supplement. This is a yeah, sublingual powder. Yeah, I was, yeah, I think I you had this, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So the Bliss is Sam E and TMG. All right. This is a sublingual powder. This is a natural mood booster. And when I say that, this literally produces serotonin and dopamine. And for the people uh, who are in the known, you could take this and hold on your tongue for about 20 seconds. And within an hour or two, you feel happy. For people who already feel happy, they feel happier. For people who are depressed and have low serotonin and dopamine production, this is like a natural antidepressant. Yes. So I really like that for people yeah. who are saying, I don't want to take a medication because I don't feel good off it. Give me something that's natural and it's effective and I can feel the difference. And I say, take bliss. 
So Absolutely. all the people who were coming to our booth, they were getting a boost drink, a uh, Slenderita, and they were getting bliss. Yeah. And uh, I think Josh probably even had it too. And he's like, oh my God, what was that? I feel amazing. Give me more of it, you know? And they're just yeah, vitamins, so over, you know they're safe. He came over super happy. <laughs> Dad, yeah, yeah. Come join us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and I, yeah. I, I, I love seeing that because the thing is secretly, I know that y'all feel happy and feel energetic behind the scenes. I'm like, I'm detoxifying your liver and restoring your serotonin production. So the geek in me is like, man, I'm making you healthy and you don't even know it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love it. I have a product similar to, to that one. Um, and while I was waiting for you to jump on, I was reading about it and I was like, do, 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 do. <laughs> I ran over and took it <laughs> real quick. Cause absolutely right. Like people are taking these antidepressants, which are in turn making their, depression worse in the long run. And it's like, this is why this information is so important to get out. Cause it's like, Hey, try this. Let's, let's try this on the front end. And we don't have to actually send you further down that horrible tunnel of darkness <laughs> that you're already down and making it worse and worse and worse. Like they, yep. these kind of supplements really are so important because they can bring people into the light again. I mean, it's that these kind of things are life changing. So you keep yep. sharing, you keep, keep sharing your list. What else you got? <laughs> All right. So what else I have? Okay. So this magnesium, we talked about the magnesium. So this one is actually three magnesiums in one. This is theronate, oh, malate, okay. and glyc glycinate. So you don't want to oxidate. Magnesium oxidate, it, it's okay, but it's oxidized. It's a free radical kind of one. It's okay. It's not the greatest, right? Theronate is one of the best ones and it's great for your brain. But since you have three of them all in one and it tastes with like lemon lime like flavor, it's it's pretty delicious. We actually put it in the boost Amazing. when we make our drinks. So it's like a yeah. little stack on top of it. So this is good. Um, let's see. Oh, Can you're you, gonna like this. Hold on, wait, back up on the neuromag real quick because I get asked yeah. about magnesium so much. Um, sure. so so can you so can you talk about the dosages and the the reasons you have the three different ones, like what they help with those different forms? Sure, sure, sure. Good? Sure. Um, so this one, uh, like, let's say, for example, the, the malate and the glycinate, this is uh, going to be mixed together. This is 200 milligrams. Um, okay. And then the theronate's about a gram. Okay. okay. So it's a pretty high dose. Theronate's yeah. going to be more for the brain. Um, yeah. Malate and glycinate, um, they're, they're kind of like interchangeable. So what happens is in your bioavailable form, you take magnesium and you're going to convert it into the form that you really need for the brain health, like theronate, right? Or glycinate for maybe the mm -hmm. gut. And, and what happens is you convert it. And what, and what will happen is uh, a lot of times people will take this and feel like, okay, well, I don't feel anything with it. How am I supposed to take, am I not supposed to have cramps or am I, you know, is it good for, you know, mm -hmm. uh, nerve health and all that stuff too? Well, the thing is if people take a lot of this, they tell me they poop a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And to me, I'm thinking, okay, it's absorbing in the gut. If people take this and all of a sudden they got clear headed and saying, okay, that magnesium from the theronate is going to the brain and it's activating those responses in the brain. So mm -hmm. because it's an oral supplement, you worry about the absorption, like we talked about before, but we've worked hard to make sure it does absorb. And so anytime that you take a dosage of magnesium, you don't want too, too high a dose, but you can roughly take anywhere from a couple hundred to about a gram and feel comfortable mm -hmm. enough to where you won't overdo it. But if you do take too much, you'll have those side effects, you know, and some people, if they want to poop yes. more, that's fine with them. Other people don't want to, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. What was that next one you got going on? Thank okay, you. so this next one, you'll love this one. Ketones. Oh, nice. I didn't know you had those. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So this is one of our newer ones. In fact, I don't think you got to try this last time. So these mm -hmm. uh, are some of our, uh, this is one of my favorites right here. So this is beta hydro, uh, hydroxybutyrate. And then it's also uh, sodium, magnesium, and calcium versions of that. Okay. And uh, you got your MCT in here as well. You got about one scoop gives you roughly about 1.5 grams, but all the electrolytes and all that, you're looking at about a thousand grams of all those combined. But um, the ingredients in here are very clean. And the way that we promote the ketones, we even put this in the drink as well. That's why mine's a little cloudy. So I put the magnesium with the boost and the ketones, even some glutamine, but the ketones is straight for the brain health. And what will happen is not only is it great for brain, but ketones actually, uh, actually um, help with the gut lining. And so a lot of yeah. people who need help going to the bathroom, they take ketones. But once again, yeah. the liver makes ketones, right? And our brain runs off of ketones. So people who are in ketosis or do a keto diet who want to stay in ketosis, they do ketones. And we love it because it gives you a little bit of energy on top of it as well. 
Yep. That's people ask me all the time what my thought is on ketones. Cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of slimy companies out there that you're like, mm-hmm. go ahead and eat your McDonald's and just drink your ketones and you'll lose weight. You know? And so I think it has put a little bit of a bad taste in people's mouth, but I'm like, ketones are amazing. I use a, they usually are. before a podcast, I'll have some ketones because like ketones and some krill oil. And my brain is just like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly so, what it is. And, and here's the funny thing. Uh, it's funny. You say the brain stuff. Most people, who takes Slenderella, if they're taking it, they're doing a liver detox, but a liver detox also does a brain detox at the same time because they all do the same thing. They detox the liver, they detox the brain. Ketones for some people, and you've seen this too with the keto diets. I love people who are keto because they think better. Their insulin's regulated. They, they have better digestive tracts, better hormone balance. And it's cool because instead of running and drinking or eating a bunch of um, coconut oil all the time, I'd rather just, you know, drink my ketones. So yeah. 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 Great. Great. Did you have any, anything else or was that all the line? Um, I I know actually I I have several more. We have nine supplements in total, but I'll tell you this. This is also one of my favorites. So this is liver love. Liver love is our liver detox pill. So I know everything has, you know, like liver detox in it, but this is specifically for liver detox. So in this one, it has like 12 or 13 ingredients. Me, I don't like taking 20 pills. Most people complain like I went to this person. They told me 20, 30 pills I need to take and all that. And I don't want to do that. So there's 12 or 13 ingredients in here and just two pills. There's DIM, NAC, alpha lipoic acid, chrysanthemum, turmeric, resveratrol. Um, there's broccoli extract, black powder. And then the one I always mispronounce, terstipanine or something. Uh, it, it's basically from uh, resveratrol as well and blueberries. Okay. but but anyway, and it's got methyl B9 and selenium and calcium in here too. This, this is a, nice. okay. There's a, this is a, a really cool thing where you basically say uh, if someone has inflammation or they have hormone balancing or just, you know, kind of something that they need help with, this is the one that they really, really need to, to do as well. So yeah, I, yeah. I can say, right. I, I, I could go on forever with it, but it's like, there's one something for everyone's little needs. So when you take a multivitamin, take a multivitamin for your liver, take a multivitamin for your brain. Just don't take a multivitamin because somebody told you to take it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. This has been so eye opening. Um, where can people, I know they can find you on Instagram, Slenderella USA, correct? And then your website, is it also Slenderella USA? SlenderellaUSA.com uh, is where you can buy any of our products. We're about to have a big special in August. We have one running right now. So please go on and, and check us out there. And then um, if you want to uh, check out the actual clinic in Austin, it's MSWLounge.com. Uh, that's where I put on my white coat and I kind of hang out and do official like medical stuff there. And um, if you want to reach to me and on uh, Instagram, I'm Nurse Doza. That's the handle. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah slenderellausa.com is the way to go and uh and definitely try try one of the products and give me feedback I always love feedback okay thank you so much next time I'm in, I'm in austin i will definitely be stopping by i didn't realize you had your lounge there i'm in austin all the time for health conferences so i will stop by i'll text you before Sweet. i head over <laughs> awesome awesome thank hey. you so much Dara. yeah thank you jonathan it was awesome talking to you today Hey, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Inside Out Health Podcast. I hope this episode served as inspiration and something that you needed to hear in your life. If you have a friend or family member that you think would benefit from this episode, please share it with them. And also please subscribe. I have so many more amazing guests coming. I have just been so gifted and honored to meet so many incredible health professionals in my career, and I cannot wait to share their messages with you guys. So please subscribe. And if you could be so kind as to rate my show, I would really appreciate it. Um, This podcast is honestly an intuitive call to me to help spread goodness to the world. And so if you guys can help me do that, I would really appreciate it. Um, If you want more info on this guest, pop over to my website, check out my podcast section, and you can get links to everything we talked about in the show um, and find out more about this guest and where you can go from here. Um, Make sure you're also following me on Instagram. Uh, That is my most active platform. You can find me at Coach Tara Garrison. You can also find me on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter. Everything is Coach Tara Garrison across the board. Um, And then, yeah, if you want to send me a message, guys, and let me know other guests or other topics you want to hear on the show, please let me know. I am here to serve you. So um, would love to hear from you. Would love your feedback on the show. And if you share any of these episodes, please tag me on social media. It's Coach Tara Garrison.